show us how to no scope. Stop show us how to use the AK-47. Stop show us how to make it. I'm sick and tired of guys asking me to do tips and tricks tutorials on how to use the weapons while I'm already batch recording other things. So you know what? Enough's enough. This video, I'm going to show you how to use every single weapon. So that way I have something to come back to, to point at and say, hey, here you go. This is what you need to look at. <laughs> this is how you use these weapons. All right. Enough's enough. Here we go. So I'm going to timestamp every weapon so you can go to the weapon that you want to learn how to use. All right. Let's go. All right. Starting up, we have the P250, which is the breach starting pistol. It has 16 bullets in the clip, and I forgot to turn off unlimited ammo. Oh, well. Oh, I'm sorry. Magazine for your gun nuts. Anyways, so for pistols, you only really have two options for fire. You have just holding on the fire button and just letting it loose. Or you have full tap fire. It's not perfect, but you get it. So the difference between full tap firing and just holding down the fire button is that you are much more accurate when just holding down the fire button with the P250. So... You can see it kind of goes up a little bit, but it just stops. But if you stand about the same spot, right about here, and you tap fire... You can see it kind of spreads out a little bit more. That's just to show the inaccuracy of just going full blast on their asses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways, that's the P250. All right, next we have the XD45. It has 18 bullets in the clip with a crit. You know what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> and it's 18 bullets in the magazine, and it has probably the fastest fire rate at its default. And as you can see when you're spraying, you can tell there is a bit of a recoil pattern to master here. I don't think I've ever tap fired with this weapon as fast before. Hold on. You can't tap fire. See, I'm tap firing with two fingers. You can't really tap fire this weapon. This is a this is default speed. Oh, by the way, this is the Coalition starting pistol. All right, up next, we have the Dual MTX. It's a dual-wielding pistol. It has 24 bullets in the magazines, 12 in each, if you're technical about that. And it also is the same thing as the P250. If you hold it down, it's really slow, but it is very precise. But when you tap fire, things get a little crazy. I don't even think I did it fast enough. So yeah, if you tap fire as fast as you can, it has a faster fire rate than the the XD45. God, that is so precise at that distance. Oh man, that's pretty precise. Dual MGX actually might be goaded for the breach if you're on pistol rounds. That's actually kind of good. And then we have the GSR, the poor GSR that has been nerfed to no end. It has received a buff, but it really hasn't been buffed. It used to one tap helmets at medium range. So about this far. It only has eight bullets in the magazine. I'm just going to call him clip because it just sounds better. We call it clip because he go clip. Anyways. Same like the P250 and Dual MTX, if you hold down the fire button, it just does its little thing, but if you tap fire it, it's way less precise. And you want to be precise with this pistol, because it, it will two-tap helmets at any range. But I don't really see any use for using the GSR anymore, it's just not a very good gun. It's supposed to be a replacement for the XD45 or the P250, but it's, it's more of a downgrade, if you ask me. Only if you can hit your shots. All right, now we're on to the big boys, the big hitters. This is the MR96. This is the revolver. It has six bullets in the chamber, and it is very good. As you can see, it is almost 100% accurate when you hold down the fire button, and it also has the same deal when you tap fire as well. Almost kind of looks like the chamber. You only want to tap fire if you're like really up close. But yeah, these, this will hit headshots all day, every day. And it's two shots for a body shot. So yeah, this is a pretty good choice. All right, lastly for the pistols, we have the Desert Eagle. It's called Deagle. That's not really the correct name for it, but who, who cares, honestly? It's just a game. It's just a game. Now, this one I have covered before. If you hold down the fire button, it just goes straight up. And you can control it. It just takes a little bit of practice. You can hit headshots all day, every day, twice on Sunday. <laughs> and tap firing is about the same as well. 
Let's try that again. Dear Lord, the recoil when tap firing is ridiculous. I didn't notice that till just now. Glad I made this video. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, just nice light tap firing is okay. However, it does do three shots to the body in order to take out an enemy player from a distance the ember 96 doesn't have that problem but yeah this is still a pretty good gun especially because of its fiery and its accuracy like even though you tap fire it goes up in a straight line all right those are all the pistols let's move on to the smgs all right up first we got the mpx it's got 30 bullets in the magazine this is more appropriate for this weapon uh, the thing about the smgs is that apparently they're better at close range just like the shotguns but honestly in my opinion i think the smg should be better at medium range let me know what you guys think of the comments below uh how how you think the smgs should be because i think this it's pretty ridiculous for a spread and it's a random spread too like there's no recoil to control for the smgs especially for this one. Now this and the MP5, I am pretty sure is $1,000 each. Yeah, that was just standing right here. If I stand back any further, it's gonna get a lot worse. And if I stand back even further, my word. We need to have controllable recoil for the SMGs. Let me know in the comments if you agree. All right, up next we have the MP5. It's got 30 bullets in the magazine as well. And this one, I'm not exactly sure it's, uh, Spread tightness. See how tight it is. Okay, honestly, that's not that bad. I mean, you can kind of get a control for it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. It's still pretty wide. But it's not as wide as the MPX. It's also silenced, which means you won't be able to be picked up on the in-game radar that I still forgot to enable for this video. I need to do that more often, honestly. All right, up next, we have the MP7. Kind of a weird inspect, to be honest. It doesn't really inspect the weapon. It's just an emote <laughs> at this point. But yeah, it's also got 30 bullets in the magazine, and it is a step up from the MP5 and the MPX. As you can kind of see here, it's got a really high fire rate for this weapon type. One of the higher ones, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, its spread is a little bit tighter than the MP5. There is a little bit of recoil you can control. Yeah, that, this is why you need to be up close and personal to be able to deal that massive amount of damage, because they do have decent damage, but they just have very bad armor penetration. And with their fire rate, it makes it that much more deadly. All right, up next, we have the P90. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. There we go. That's better. All right, it's got 50 bullets in the magazine. This one has the most bullets in the SMG category, and its spread is... similar to the MP7. Now, as you notice with this one, if you just let it go, it goes straight up. So if you pull down like I did right here testing it, you get a better... a more, con more concise spread. And once again, going further away... Doesn't really help that much. You can really see the night and day difference between up close and far away. That's why they recommend using the SMGs at close range. Oh, hold on. Wait. All right, next gun. And lastly, we have probably the most viable SMG, I would be tempted to say. It is the Vector. This thing's got 33 bullets in the magazine, and it is the highest fire rate SMG in the bunch. It also has a pretty tight spread, similar to the MP5. But something about this gun that I learned from a buddy of mine, the first five bullets on the Vector are near 100% accurate. Of course, that wasn't a perfect five bullet burst. But as you can see, standing... Whoa. Standing right here, the spread is so much tighter. It is incredible. Plus, with its high fire rate, you could just... It's almost like tap firing with either an MR96 or a Deagle. It is very precise, even at this distance, which mimics real life, actually. The Vector was designed to be able to 
tank the recoil that comes from firing the bullets. A little no effect. All right, and that's all the SMGs. Now let's move on to the assault rifles. All right, up first for the assault rifles, we have the SA-58. It is the only burst fire weapon in this game. That is not a joke. It holds 30 bullets in the magazine, and it is on the cheap side, which makes sense because it has medium armor penetration, and the spread... Similar to an SMG, if not a little tighter. So yeah, using this at close or medium range, you'll be able to hit headshots pretty well with it. Standing too far away, like say right here. There's not really enough recoil to control it, but as you can see, the bullets spread out pretty wide, so it's good to be either close or medium range. And when I say close or medium range, I'm talking close range at max five meters, medium range at most 15 meters, and long range at least 25 meters that's that's the general guideline for that anyways up next we have the m4 this is a coalition weapon i probably should have mentioned if the other weapons were coalition or breach ah you'll figure it out <laughs> i'm just showing you how to use the weapons i'm not telling you where they're at you can figure that out for yourself it has 30 bullets in the magazine and it does one tap damage a while ago that used to only do two tap headshot damage if it had if they had armor. But yeah, this gun is pretty easy to control. And now it's time for the section of this video called recoil control. This is the only section of this video where it's going to talk about recoil control because these are the only weapons that have any real recoil control. So this is the recoil pattern for the M4. It's basically just straight up and then go, dances back and forth at the top. So if you hold down just for even a little bit, you could get some pretty precise shots. Again, I'm not perfect with it, but you get the idea. All right, next for the assault rifles, we have the AR-15. It is one of the scoped rifles, which means you could just use the scope and you'd be able to look down the red dot sight right here. Now, something about the scoped rifles that you need to know is that they are more precise when you're shooting down the scope, but you still can hit in between the crosshair right here when just firing blank scoped. So when firing down the scope, you can see the bullets go straight to where the red dot is at, and it's pretty tight. But when you're unscoped, it's actually not as bad, mainly because I know the recoil pattern of this weapon very well. So the recoil for the AR-15 looks like this. And when scoped in, it is almost the exact same. The only difference being it is more, there is less spread between the bullets. Now, something that I'm a little nitpicky about this is that it doesn't actually make you more accurate. It doesn't help with like recoil control, which is what I think the scopes on these weapons should be for. But if that were the case, then they have to be more expensive. And then <laughs> it'd be a whole lot of balancing changes and testing for the developers to do. And they don't want to do that. So yeah, controlling the recoil with the scope on gives you a nice height spread similar to the m4 and unscoped it's a little bit more spread out a little bit harder to control because you don't have the red dot but something i also notice is that this gun does a little bit more damage than the ak-47 which is the next weapon on this list it holds 30 bullets in the magazine just like the sa 58 and the m4 unlike the ar-15 which has 25 bullets now the recoil for the ak-47 is one of the hardest recoils to control here it is as you can see there is a big amount of adjusting you need to do in order to be able to control it now i've already covered this in a short a while ago but i have also stated that you can also aim a little bit below the head right at the body so that way you're able to hit your shots a little bit easier when you get to headshot level. So you're not trying to fight it down here. All right, up next we have the Scar H. It is the other scoped rifle in this game, and it has 20 bullets in the magazine. And similar to the AR-15, it is a lot less accurate when you're unscoped than when you are scoped. You can really tell the difference here, just how smooth that transition is between each bullet when you're scoped in compared to when you're not scoped in. It's night and day difference. So is the recoil control or the scoped version looks like this. It's a nice little S curve. 
the right, left to the right. And for the unscoped, it's the same recoil pattern, but it's got a little bit more spread. So just by pulling down, pulling down. Kinda looks like a mouth, doesn't it? It's a scar face. I got jokes for days. I'll be here all week. And something also you need to know about this weapon is that if you try and tap fire with it, it is not very accurate. And I've already made a short about this saying how the scars one tap potential is not very good. It's very inaccurate compared to the AK-47, which is surprising. But that's one of the features of the scar is that it's not very accurate when you're tap firing. It's just full spray shoot to kill. All right, up next for the assault rifles, we have the SG-551. It has 30 bullets in its magazine, and it is the upgraded version of the AK-47 because it is a breech weapon. Now, its recoil pattern looks like this. You go up, slide to the left, and then to the right, and then back to the middle. It is a very slow, gradual recoil pattern, which is very easy to control. So just holding down the fire button and just holding it could get you far enough, especially if you burst fire with it. Which is why it is considered the upgraded version of the AK. And speaking of upgraded versions, we have the AUG, which is the upgraded version of the M4, technically speaking. It has 32 bullets in its magazine, and it is also silenced like the M4. The only difference is that it has higher damage. So the AUG's recoil pattern looks like this. goes up to the right a bit then to the left and then to the right it also has a very high spread for some reason which is weird so then controlling it will look something like this and yeah that's basically the aug there really isn't anything else about it except that it's silenced and that it's the upgraded version of the m4 and lastly for our assault rifles category we have the hk417 and as we have said on this channel many times before HK Supreme. As you can see, there's literally only one bullet underneath the rest of the entirety of the magazine, which there's only 20 bullets in the magazine, similar to the SCAR. The only difference is that it has a slower fire rate, very slow fire rate. But it is incredibly precise. Like, you just need to pull down once, and you're basically 100% accurate from any distance. Like if I shot from right here... Yeah, this is just really good spread. Ignore that. This is just really good spread. It is also the most expensive assault rifle, boasting $4,000. All right, and that is it for the assault rifles. Now it's time to move on to the sniper rifles. All right, up first, we have the TRG-22. It has 10 bullets in its magazine. Scope down the sight. Pretty much all the snipers are going to have the same standard scope like this. I wonder if in the future Critical Ops could add like different types of scope graphics to the different uh, uh, snipers. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. But anyways, the thing about the TRG is that it is one shot headshot, two shot body shot, and it is very fast on the reload. You can just hold down the fire button and it is much faster than the ratio and now it's time to show you how to no scope with this thing i know you guys are waiting for this section so this is going to be the part where i show you how to no scope with these weapons and you just have to be unscoped but you have to be up close and have them in the center of your screen roughly that would be about the center there I'm gonna hold it right here as you can see with the trg it is quite accurate while unscoped like, the majority of the bullets will stay clustered together, but that's only if you're standing still. If you're moving around like this, then it's not going to be very accurate. As you can see, it's going all over the place. Alright, up next for the snipers, we have the M14. It has eight bullets in his magazine, and it is called an auto sniper. That is because you can hold down the fire button, and it will automatically fire after each shot. You don't have to re-rack the gun every single time. As you saw there, this does have a bit of a recoil pattern to learn, but it's not very accurate if you just hold down the fire button. As you can see, it's very... It's not as accurate as it would be if you were just tap firing. So the M14, you want to tap fire. Wait till your crosshair rests back on the shot you just took, and just fire away. 
And no scoping with this thing. I would not recommend it. All right, up next we have the SVD. It has 10 bullets in its magazine, similar to the TRG, and it's also an auto sniper just like the M14. However, its fire rate is a little bit slower. Although similarly to the M14, it is not as accurate when you're holding down the fire button, but with this weapon in particular, you noticed that every time you shot and held down the fire button, the crosshair came right back to its resting point, which is what I told you to do with the M14. However, it is not quite as accurate as you would expect it to be. So for the SVD, you gotta wait till your crosshair completely 100% resets. You can see towards the end there, it slowly moves back to its original position. So fast, fast, slow, fast, fast, slow. Kind of, kind of see it there. You can also tap fire with this thing. But I would not recommend tap firing with this thing because it, it, the bullets just go all over the place. Hang on, let me get to a clean wall so you can see. Go. Yeah. Tap firing with this thing is not the best. And no scoping. I also would not recommend. And finally, for the sniper rifles, we have the U-Ratio. It has 10 bullets in its magazine, and it is a semi-auto, so you have to re-rack the shot every single time. So hold in the fire button. It is pretty much 100% accurate every single time. Now, if you notice, those, fi those shots fired were a little bit slower, but there is a trick that you can do with the U-Ratio that can make you fire your bullets much faster. And that is called quick swapping, or as I originally called it at one point in time, stumping. As you get the other player stumped, like, does the U-Ratio really fire that fast? Am I going crazy? Am I high? And it was quick swapping. Immediately after you fire the U-Ratio, you swap between your weapons really quick. As you can tell, I'm very good at quick swapping most of the time. So anyways, you aim down your scope and then you fire and quick swap. As you can see, you fire all 10 bullets off much faster than just regular scoping and holding down the fire button. Now, no scoping for this thing. Not the best. If you want to no scope with the sniper rifles, I suggest you go with the TRG-22. You have a better chance of hitting all of your shots than using either of the auto snipers or the ratio. But if you do want to no scope, I suggest you stay very close to your target, like within five meters, because that's the only unit of measure we have in this game. <laughs> All right, those are all the sniper rifles. Now let's get into the final weapon category, the shotguns. All right, so up first for the shotguns, we have the FP6. It has eight shells in its chamber rack. I don't know what to call this. I don't usually use a lot of terminology with shotguns. But anyways, it has eight slugs, and you can also hold down the fire button to fire all your shots. And there is no recoil with the shotguns. You just need to just hold down the fire button and just spray and pray. Now, one thing about the shotguns that not a lot of other weapons have is its spread it does not change when you're moving. So, so that's when it's standing still. That's when you're moving. So you can run around the map and just shotgun everybody you want in the face. Now, because the shotgun doesn't shoot bullets, but instead pellets from a slug, you want to be able to hit as many of your pellets on your target as possible. So it's better to aim for full body shots rather than just headshots. So aim for the main torso, or if you are so inclined to, and if you're close enough, you can aim for the upper chest and head to do the most amount of damage with shotguns. All right, up next for the shotguns, we have the M1887. It has five slugs that you can shoot, which is the least amount of bullets in any gun in this game. I said bullets, but these are slugs. Anyways, the spread for the shotgun is a little bit tighter than the FP6, so you still want to be aiming for body shots or upper chest and head shots, but with this weapon, you can do it a little bit further away, as you kind of saw there, because the bullet impacts disappear after a certain amount of bullet impacts are spawned in the game. Anyways, it also shoots a little bit faster than the FP6. So you gotta be careful with this thing, otherwise you're gonna run out of slugs real quick. Alright, the next shotgun is called the Super 90. 
and it's super because it's automatic. It has eight shells that you can shoot, and it is an auto shotty. So when you fire this weapon, yeah, it's an auto shotty. So there is a little bit of recoil to control here, but again, the premise is still the same when moving with this weapon. You have the same spread of pellets throughout all your shots. And now for the last shotgun in this list, we have the KSG. Racking that has brought nightmares to a lot of players when this first came out, because this used to be the go-to weapon for anti-eco, for safe rounds, just because of the amount of damage this thing could do. It has 12 slugs that you can shoot, which is the most out of any shotgun in this game. And it is borderline auto shotty, but you do have to rack each slug when you fire it. But it is faster than the FP6 and M1887, but not as fast as the Super 90. But yeah, same with all the other shotguns. It has the same deal with its spread. It has more shells. It has less pellets per shell. You can kind of see you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The others have nine. And those are all of the weapons in Critical Ops. You're welcome. This is a little bit of a longer one, mostly because I want this to be the all-be-all -all weapons guide until the next weapon comes out, then I'll just add it to the list. So this is the de facto video I'm going to send all of you to if you want to learn how to use a certain weapon. Until the next weapon comes out, then I'll just make another video showcasing that weapon instead. Anyways, that's it for this video, and as always, stay safe. Bye-bye.